G'day everyone, Percy here from toptechskills.com and today we're taking a look at the Ansible Fetch module. The Ansible Fetch module is used anytime you'd like to download a file from your remote hosts onto your local host. In this tutorial, I cover the default behavior of the Fetch module, how we can remove extraneous folder structure from our fetched files, and finally, how we use Fetch to fetch multiple files from remote hosts. As always, there's an article that accompanies this on toptechskills.com that'll be linked in the description below. So take a look at that if you'd like to copy any of the snippets or find out more about anything that you hear in this tutorial. All right, let's jump straight in. The first thing we're gonna look at with the fetch module is just its default behavior. What I've got in front of me is a playbook that is just going to ensure that a test file exists on both of the hosts. What I've done here for the path is I've used the Ansible user variable to make sure that on the CentOS and Ubuntu machines, we've got the default test file going into the home directory of the user we're logged in with. And what I'll do now is I'll just run this playbook against both of the hosts so we can ensure that the test file exists on both of them. And what I'll do is I'll go over there and just take a look with LS to confirm that the test file is there on CentOS. I'll do the same thing on Ubuntu, just LS, and we can see that test file is on both of those hosts. What we'll do now is we'll use the uh, fetch module to download that file from both of the hosts. For the name, I'm just gonna say fetch test file. And for the module, we'll obviously use fetch. And what we can do is set the source and the destination of that. So considering that we're downloading a file from the remote host to our local host, the source is going to be where it is on the remote host. What I'm going to do is just copy that and paste that down there because that's where it's going to be on the remote host. The local destination is the folder in which Ansible is going to put those fetched files. So for now, I'm just gonna put it into a folder called fetched. And if I run that playbook now, we'll see what happens with the default behavior of fetch. So that's downloaded both of them now. And as you can see on the left-hand side in my files uh, browser there, we have a fetched folder and we have the Ansible host name of both of our machines. So we have our CentOS 7 machine and our Ubuntu Bionic machine. And if we go down, we can see that it's actually downloaded the full folder structure to where we found the file, right? So this full folder structure goes down and we have our test file in both of them. It is just an empty file, so there's going to be nothing inside it. But you can see the default behavior of fetch is to put the file inside the full folder structure inside each host. So what if we want to remove all that extraneous directory structure from our downloaded files? As you can see here in our fetch directory from the previous example, we have our inventory hosts and then underneath each one, we have the full directory structure leading up to the test file. This isn't what I want. I'd like to ignore these directories and just get the file underneath the inventory host name. I'm gonna show you the way to do that and I'm going to jump back into our, our playbook and I'm going to set the flat parameter to true. And this has some sort of unintuitive behavior by default. So let me remove this directory here on the left and run the playbook again to show you what happens when we set flat true without making any other adjustments. We can see here on the left is it's created a fetched file here rather than a directory. And if we look inside the file, it's just an empty file, which is what would be contained in our empty test files. What flat true has actually done is it's removed all assumptions about any sort of directory structure. And what it's going to do is just take that file and put it at that file. So this fetched, if we put a forward slash at the end of it, let me remove the fetched file there. Let's put the forward slash at the end of fetched and run the playbook again and we'll see what happens. So now that the playbook's running, we'll see it finish and we can see that yes, we have a fetched directory, but if we open it, we see a single test file. It's not uh, put into directories that are associated with each one of our hosts like we want. And if we look inside, it's just an empty file. So we don't actually know which host this has come from um, and which content it's for. So to show you how that actually works and what might actually happen if we had different content on both hosts, I'm going to change this first file call to copy. I'm going to set the destination to be the same file. And in the content, I'm going to put something host specific. So copy is just a nice quick way to put some host specific content into a file. Inside the content, I'm going to put the Ansible host, which is going to be the IP of the instance. If I run that playbook again, you'll see that what we should get is an error when Ansible tries to write to that single test file. And yep, that's exactly what we've gotten. Uh, in here, we have a fatal error on the CentOS 7 machine. And the reason is that our test file now has some host specific data. And this is the IP from the Ubuntu Bionic instance. And what's, an, what Ansible has tried to do 
It's tried to overwrite that file with our CentOS 7 test file and it's failed because they're different content. The way that we'd overcome that is by setting the destination to something host specific. What I'd like is a directory for each one of our hosts. So what I'm going to do is do the inventory host name and then I'm gonna put a forward slash at the end of it because we want it to be inside that directory. Let's run the playbook again and see how that behaves. It's playing right now and we have fetch test file. Awesome, and we can see on the left-hand side that we've got our two new directories and if we open each one up, perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. If we take a look inside, we have the CentOS 7 IP there and the Ubuntu Bionic IP there. So if we jump back to our playbook there, this is generally what you'll want when you're fetching files, if you use the flat true parameter there. What you wanna do is you need to set some sort of host specific information into the destination. I always think that putting it in a directory is better, but you could also use this templating language to change the file name. Let's say you're fetching a single log and you'd like to have the host IP of the host that you fetched it from to be in the file name, but not in a directory. You could also use, use it this way. Let me give you a quick example of how you might do that. So let's say we do something like this and then we run it again. What we're going to get is a test file with a dot and then the inventory host name appended to that. You can see that there on the left-hand side, we have our test file.centos7, test file.ubuntu bionic 1808. And that's how you do it. So removing the file structure from the file is a little bit unintuitive, but you can get through it and this is how you do it. The last thing I'll show you with the fetch module is how you might use the fetch module to fetch multiple files. First thing I'm going to do in our playbook here is I'm going to change this copy command to run in a loop to put in multiple files. I'm gonna add the loop keyword here and I'm just going to call this test file one and test file two. And it's just going to put two files in with the same content in here because we're not making a single file. We're going to have to replace this with item which will be the file name from the loop. The next thing we'd need to do is change our fetch to fetch the multiple files. Presently, the fetch module can't fetch directories recursively. So for instance, if we do this, where we just fetch the full directory, let's run that and see what happens. So in the first part of the command, we're going to create two test files. And what we expect to happen here in the fetch is that it fetches the entire directory and then puts it inside. So you can see here that both of the hosts have errored out here with an error message saying, remote file is a directory, fetch cannot work on directories. So that's a limitation of fetch at the moment. We can't fetch a directory, but what we can do is do the same loop. What I'm going to do here is set the loop keyword and I'm going to set the two items to test file one to match what we have up there and test file two. The other thing we need to do here is set the source to be the item and this should now work. This should now download both test file one and test file two from the remote hosts. That's running now, it's ensuring both the files exist and now it should be downloading both of them from both hosts. Let's open up our fetch directory there on the left hand side. CentOS 7, Ubuntu Bionic, excellent. We have test file one, test file two, both of them have the same content but it's different on each host. So that's how you use fetch in a loop. Thanks for watching everyone. I really hope that was useful and gave you a good introduction into the Ansible fetch module. If you have any questions about today's tutorial, please leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and consider subscribing to our channel to see more content. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.